Thanks for tuning in to another Teleaquarium episode with the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Lindsay and I'm part of the education team. If you joined us yesterday, you may have played along with Darren and I as we guessed animal ocean sounds. Today we are going to do something uh, similar, another game, but this time we're going to observe with our eyes and listen with our ears um, to some poems that I've written about certain animals that you might be missing at the Alaska Sea Life Center. So I've written a couple of poems to describe them and we're going to take a guess at what those animals are based on the descriptions found in those riddle riddles. Um, so I'm about to pull up photos of the animals. Now I'm surrounded by animals, which is truly the dream. <laughs> and I'll go over each of these animals um, and when you're making guesses, feel free to type it in the chat if you want to um, when you're making those guesses. But up top on my left, or on the left hand side of the screen, to try to point correctly, that is a king eider. Below that are moon jellies, a giant Pacific octopus all the way at the bottom, and then right in front of me um, to my left, that is a tufted puffin. Then next to that is a ringed seal. And then we've got a stellar sea lion right over here. And then all the way up at the top on the right hand side of the screen is a sea otter. So how it works once again is I will read the poem and you guys take a guess at what animal I'm talking about. So if you guys are ready, I'll get started. All right. Wing-like flippers help me glide through the sea. Blubber and fur keep me nice and toasty. The largest of all, this isn't a lure. You'll know I'm nearby when you hear me roar. All right, what do y'all think? If you are thinking stellar sea lion, that is exactly right. Awesome job, off to a great start. Now let's go over um, some things that are found in the poem. So our stellar sea lions, they have these huge front flippers and those are gonna push them through the ocean. Um, you can see here our stellar sea lions at the Alaska Sea Life Center are doing a great demonstration of that on video but they're gliding through the sea uh, in these colder waters in Alaska. They do need to stay warm and they have an adaptation known as blubber. This is a layer of fat under their skin and that helps them keep them nice and warm. They do have fur, but it's not very thick. Um, but our stellar sea lions are the largest species of sea lions in the world. If you get an opportunity to come visit us at the Alaska Sea Life Center and stand up against um, this habitat and they swim by, it is incredible. You can't even imagine how big they are if you haven't been here. But I hope you guys are able to visit someday, but they are massive. They can get up to 2,000 pounds, pilot our stellar sea lion. Um, he has even exceeded that at some times, I believe. But our stellar sea lions, if you played our game yesterday, you might have also gotten to hear the sounds they make. And if you haven't, I'll play one again for you. So take a listen. All right, so that's a pretty good roar there. And I'll pull this back up. So awesome, off to a great start. And if you want to keep playing along, you guys are doing great. I'll do the next poem. A beak I do have, but you won't hear me tweet. I can easily walk, but I do not have feet. Suction cups help me hold on to meals. I naturally social distance. It's not a big deal. So maybe at first you were thinking beak, we've got a couple birds up here but maybe that um, suction cups gave it away because I am talking about the giant Pacific octopus. That's right. So we've got our giant Pacific octopus. Um, they are the biggest octopus species. And here's a really great photo of one. They have beaks, uh, kind of like a bird, helps them crush up food. It's on the underside of their body, um, behind, underneath all that um, the head and surrounded by those arms because they don't have feet. 
but they have eight arms. Octo means eight, octopus, they have eight arms. And I'll show you a video of an octopus walking across our habitat at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Take a look, absolutely incredible. And those suckers on those arms, you can have up to 1,500 suckers along those eight arms total. Um, and they, each of those suckers can taste and move individually and they can hold onto things. They're pretty strong. So around a three and a half inch sucker could hold up to 30 pounds. It's really cool, but they are naturally um, socially distant. <laughs> I know that for us, a lot of times um, nowadays, it's been really hard to socially distance from our friends and family, but that is a totally normal thing for our octopuses. They are solitary creatures. So um, if you're ever wondering why one is alone, that's just how they, how they live life. Um, it's totally normal for them. But great job. Let's do another one. Golden plumes behind my eyes with a bright beak the color of sunrise. Don't be deceived, I'm tough as can be. I'm also the mascot of the ASLC. Another beak, what do you think? Yes, we are talking about the tufted puffin right in front of me here, Ooh, right in front of me here. Um, I will show you a video of one they're so cool. We have them in our aviary at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And those golden plumes, they come in, that's their breeding plumage. And it might remind you of a mad scientist, those tufts. Um, that's what they remind me of. And they have a beautiful bright beak. But we have, as well as our tufted puffins at the Alaska Sea Life Center, we have horned puffins. And people might get those mixed up. Here's a horned puffin photo. But the biggest difference you can notice is that this horned puffin has a white patch on its belly. But our tufted puffins, they have a totally black belly. Um, a good way to remember it is what I've learned, it's easy to remember for me, is tough guys wear black. And that is our tufted puffin. We also have, of course, Tuffy. It's our mascot of the Alaska Sea Life Center. There's Tuffy out over outside looking at Resurrection Bay. Um, Tuffy has been in several videos on Teleaquarium. If you haven't seen them yet, they're doing a lot of scavenger hunts. I encourage you to check those out, um, our past videos in our education folder or education video section. So be sure to check those out. Great job. Okay, we are knocking these out. Let's do another one. When I eat a fish, I do not chew. The family I'm in means I'm the truest of true. I rest on ice, my flippers help me up. Circles on my back, I give birth to pups. So just so you know, what we have left is um, our moon jellies, sea otter, ring seal, king eider. If you are thinking ring seal, you are absolutely correct. Our ring seal, we've got Spencer down here, and they, when they eat a fish, they don't chew, and that is because they do not have back molars. So this is actually a skull of a stellar sea lion, but um, they do have a similar um, tooth arrangement. They've got those front canines and then those premolars, but all the way in the back, they don't have those molars like you or I do that help chew. So when we see our toss a fish to our seals or sea lions, they gulp it down whole. Those teeth are mainly to catch the fish. Um, that's their main focus. But let me show you a really great photo of Spencer, our ring seal. He's very cute. Um, our seals are in the family Phocidae, which means true seals. So they are phocids, and the best way to tell a true seal from, say, a sea lion is looking at those ears. You'll notice that Spencer has a hole right behind his eye. Those are his ear holes, 
And sea lions have um, ear flaps over those. So if you're trying to figure out if it's a seal or a sea lion, the best way to um, guess is by looking at that um, area. But these are, um, ring seals are a type of ice seal. There are four species of ice seal. They do rely on ice for survival to rest and give birth to their pups. And you can check out those front flippers. They are nice and curved to help maneuver on the ice. And of course, ring seal, they do get their name because on their back they have those rings, that pattern. So very good if you got that correct. I hope you guys are having fun, because I certainly am. I love talking about these animals. Um, but let's move on to our another, another one. Defined as plankton, I go with the flow. No brain, heart, or eyes, there's not much to show. When found in groups, call us a smack. Think of things out in space. You're on the right track. So what do you think? Moon jellies? If you think that, you are correct. Awesome. Yes, our moon jellies. I'll pull up a big photo of them. We've got our moon jellies here. They are defined as plankton. Um, they go with the flow of the ocean currents. They can't really actively swim against those. And that is the main definition of plankton. They, if you've ever been to the beach, you might notice that there's some jellies washed up on the beach. That is because when that tide comes in, brings them up, and the tide goes back out, they can't actively swim against that current. So they're stuck up on the land. But jellies are really interesting creatures. They don't have a brain, heart, or eyes, but they are able to sting prey in order to survive. Um, that prey will just come across them as they're floating through the water. Um, they're not really actively going after food. It's more of a whatever floats their way. But the moon jellies here, they're pretty clear. And here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, we propagate our own moon jellies. We raise them and we feed them brine shrimp. And brine shrimp is very small and it has a pinkish color. And what's really neat is that when we do one of those feedings, you can actually see the brine shrimp traveling through them. It makes them a pinkish hue. So it's super neat. But those are our moon jellies. And if you got that correct, well done. And we've got two animals left. We have our sea otter and our king eider. So pretty different animals. Let's see what this next poem brings. Densest fur in all the land, I hold on to clams with my front hands. Floating on my back, simple to do. While I have relatives elsewhere, I'm in the big blue. You're probably guessing correctly, that is our sea otter. They are a favorite here at the Alaska Sea Life Center and in Seward in general. Uh, sea otters are the densest, have the densest fur in all the animal kingdom. They are a marine mammal, but they don't have blubber like our seals or sea lions to help keep them warm. So they really need a thick um, patch of fur to keep them warm. And in fact, in a square inch, so if you put your um, finger in this shape and your thumb, about a square inch, if you put that on the sea otter's body in an area, that's gonna have about a million hairs in that square inch, that circle, which is more than you have on your entire body. Just crazy to think about. But our sea otters, they like to hold on to clams, and this one has a fish um, he's holding on to, taking a bite out of, but that's what they're gonna use to maneuver and grab their food and hold on to as they float on their back. Now here in Seward, Alaska, every, almost every time I go down to the Resurrection Bay, I see a sea otter and they're usually floating on their back. It, they look very relaxed, um, but do, they do a great job of that. But there are all types of otters out in the world. We have our river otters, but our sea otters are found in the sea. So we've got one left. So just by process of elimination, you guys know that I'm talking about, gonna talk about the king eider, but I still, let's still listen to the description and just really pay attention and observe the picture of the animal and we can learn more about it. Okay. 
colorful head, feathers so sleek, watch me dive up to 85 feet deep. Females are more of a reddish brown. I float on my throne. All I need is a crown. So we know it's the King Eider, but let's figure out why. So he's got, this is a male King Eider. I've just pulled up a photo. The beautiful colorations. Um, people that come visit us at the Alaska Sea Life Center, this is one of, this is a popular bird just because of that beautiful coloration. And the feathers on the back look a lot like a sports car. It looks very fancy and sleek. But our King Eiders can dive up to 85 feet deep. And when they're diving, they're looking for food, they're looking for insect larvae, crustaceans, plant material. Um, you can see that in our diving seabird habitat, which we actually have a live stream going on our Teleaquarium, um, our YouTube page. So after this video, if you wanna check that out, that's going all day. It's really cool to watch. But our King Eiders, our males and females have different colorations. And here is a male and female doing a sort of synchronized swimming routine. The female is in the back. She's more of that reddish brown color while the King Eider male is up front. The, the really pretty coloration, the bright colors. Um, the males are gonna have that coloration to impress the ladies. But they're really good at floating on top of the water, but they're just missing that crown, our King Eiders. Beautiful. All right, well, you guys did an amazing job figuring out these Noam poems, but I hope you had a lot of fun with that. I certainly had fun um, creating those and sharing those the facts about the animals with you. If you want to, I encourage you, especially if you've got beautiful days ahead wherever you're at, go outside and observe in nature, find a cool animal to observe. Scientists do that all the time. They don't necessarily write uh, poems about it, but it could be fun and get your creative juices flowing to create a poem describing an animal. And once you do that, you can share that with your friends and family, maybe have a game night to do that, and you can all learn along with that. But I hope you guys had a fun time. I wanna thank you for joining us for another Tale Aquarium episode. If you want to continue checking out our videos, please like and subscribe. We'll be doing these videos every day. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for coming.